So before we get into this video, I just want to apologise that this wasn't uploaded yesterday, which it should have been loaded on a Sunday. This weekend has been a super busy weekend um, with one thing and another, um, sorting Grace's dance, um, like costumes out, getting them all like um, pinned and ready. Uh, Max has had football matches, um, I've had my in-laws over, I've had my parents over. It's just been a busy weekend, a lovely weekend, but a busy weekend. So hence why there's no been an upload from this reading vlog. Without further ado, let's get on with it and then you'll see me at the end, but I just wanted to personally apologise before you get into this video. Happy Monday, I'm just about to head out the house for work. Um, so I've read another chapter of um, Rachel's Pudding Pantry. I'm on page 38 and oh, this is just such a cosy read. It's such an easy read as well. So um, Rachel um, lives on the farm with her mum and daughter Maisie and we are at the lambing season at the moment. Next door in another farm lives the single um, Tom who um, is quite attractive but I like how Rachel just sees him as a friend. She's very grateful of his help when she comes stuck with um, a large lamb won't, won't um, be able to be birthed on its own. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice concept. Jill is just the proper like um, farmer's wife, always baking, always cooking, always got something on the hob, um, or the arga should I say. And I just like the concept, um, the helping hand of um, Simon, um, the um, Maisie having to catch a bus, it's set in Northumberland, which I personally love. I love Northumberland and being up north. Um, so yeah, um, not much has happened, but it's a really nice setting and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's just a nice, cosy, comforting read where you just don't have to think too much and you know what's going to happen because obviously I've read the synopsis on the Christmas at Rachel's Pudding Pantry and um, so I know that she gets with Tom. I don't think that's a spoiler, I think that's obvious um, and I can't wait how how that romance develops kind of thing and yeah I'm really looking forward to reading more of this. So I'm going to head to work now. So it's Tuesday and I'm still reading Rachel's Pudding Pantry but it's a very slow burner uh, of a book and because it's not my kind of genre which I am used to um, I think I'll get more out of this book when I actually go up to Northumberland later on this month um, because it is set in Northumberland and I think I'll get more cosy feels, I'll be relaxed, I'll just want one book and I'll just read it up there. So I think that I'm just going to put this down for a moment, but we don't know. We'll see how things go. But it's a really good book. I'm really enjoying it. I'm just wanting a bit more of a fast-paced book. So I was trying to shop hunting for some more books, and I came across this one, which is James Patterson Private, which is the first book in the private series which I am so happy about. I wasn't going to pick this up at all to read. I was like no we'll we'll wait and then I just started reading the first two pages and boom I'm hooked. So last night I read 86 pages and I'm loving it. I'm just loving it. Um, it's very much a character building book because it's the first book in a series so I expected that. There's a lot of characters to get your head around and how they connect with certain people but overall I'm enjoying it. So the basis of this book is you've got the main protagonist which is Jack. Jack has his own like business called The Privates and what The Privates are are um, higher than the FBI, higher than the like is it CP, CAPD um, or LAPD? I forgot what they're called in here because there's so many different names. LA, LAPD, LAPD, I think that's what they're called. Yeah, Los Angeles Police Department. Yeah, they're quite high up, but they're exclusive. So you pay a lot of money for Jack and his team to uncover some truths. So Jack was inherited this like business from his father. His father was um, 
had been done for murder and he left the business with 15 million pounds to Jack to take over. That was his dying wish. So Jack has built this business up and he has lots of clients and lots of cases to solve. Everyone everyone who's got some something to solve or a missing person or something which is a bit suspicious, you go to Jack and his team because his forensics department is better than the actual police department they can do a lot more because obviously they've got a lot more money being pumped into it so one of the main cases which is in here is he's got a best friend called andy and andy has just gone into his house and found that his wife his newly his newly um, wedded wife um, shelby has been brutally murdered and there is no evidence to say that someone has been in this house and shot Shelby. So all the aim is on Andy. Um, Jack has asked the question, mate, you need to tell me the truth. Have you actually murdered, murdered Shelby? And she, he's like, no. Have you got any connections? No. So that's one of the main cases which they're trying to solve. Um, and then also there's another line of inquiries where... Um, there's another woman who works in the privates called Justine. She is on the case of these schoolgirls who are getting brutally murdered, and the killer is taking something from the um, the girl. So an earring, a necklace, um, an actual ear in one case, putting it in a bag, planting it somewhere, and then texting the police and giving them the coordinates for where that piece of evidence is. And there's no connection between the girls and they do not know what, who or what the killer is. They don't know whether it's just one killer, they don't know if it's a group of killers, they don't know at the moment in time. And at the current, and at the moment, we as a reader are finding more out about this, uh, about a killer and about this group. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I'm really, really invested in this and um, a bit of a different writing style to the previous books I've read. Um, I don't know whether that's because of this Maxine Pedro who's involved in this. A very different writing style, not something I don't, I don't, it's not like I don't like, it's just different. It's not, it is fast paced because the chapters are very short. Uh, but you're really having to think of these characters because the characters have got quite similar names. Um, some of the characters are, are related to some other characters, so you've, you've got to follow like the path of it, whereas beforehand in James Patterson, the characters were quite easy to follow because there was a distinct link between who is who, is who kind of thing and there weren't like this crossover of characters. But I think more and more I get into it, more and more the characters will just become familiar and now i realize why there's so many books in here because jack as is well known has different um privates all over the world so hence why there's private london private india private paris because there is other teams around the world and um, but his main base is in la where this book is set so that's where i'm up to with my my reading so just to wrap up um, I'm still reading James Patterson Private. Now, if you've been watching these reading vlogs a while, you know that I just eat up James Patterson books in like one or two sittings. However, this book is really, really character based and I'm really having to like get my head around the characters because obviously it's setting its scene for the whole um, shebang kind of thing and um, yeah there's a lot to get your head round there's lots of different cases going on um, because obviously it's a massive like agency um, which work with lots of different cases so you've got different people going off into like sub like subsections and you learn about that case and you learn about them as a person their private life and then you're going back to like the main character Jack and finding out what cases he's got then you've got another subsection over there and they've got another case going on. Same thing, you learn about their backstory. So there's a lot to take in it. It's not like I'm not enjoying it. It's just that I'm, I'm having to really like focus my time in it because 
I'm, I'm needing to know these characters because it is a, a series which I do want to take on in the future. I'm really wanting to know how um, some of these cases end, do they end, do they lead on to the next books? So there's a lot of unanswered questions so I will be um, um, picking that up this week. Also as well, um, I can't wait to take this on my little holly bobs with me. Um, so this has been my holiday read um, when I go. Um, where I am going is in Northumberland and they have a place called Barter Books at Annick and I cannot wait to go back there. So hopefully there's lots of um, James Patterson books there waiting for me, especially in the Mike Bennett series. Um, and then I could start one of them on my holidays, which would just be amazing. So, um, so let's see what I get up to this week with my reading and I hope you've had a lovely week. So as always, send a huge positive thoughts. See you soon. Bye.